Welcome to Living Life. Today we're going to look at the scriptures in chapter 17 of Isaiah with respect to God's judgment upon Ephraim and Syria. The Bible says, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Is it possible to engage in all of the spiritual disciplines, reading the word, prayer, Bible study, worship, and yet forget God and even forsake Him? Well, we're going to consider this particular very issue and very subject in the passage that we're going to look at together. Isaiah chapter 17, verses 1 through 11. An oracle concerning Damascus. See, Damascus will no longer be a city, but will become a heap of ruins. The city of Arawer will be deserted and left to flocks, which will lie down, with no one to make them afraid. The fortified city will disappear from Ephraim and royal power from Damascus. The remnant of Aram will be like the glory of the Israelites, declares the Lord Almighty. In that day the glory of Jacob will fade, the fat of his body will waste away. It will be as when a reaper gathers the standing grain and harvests the grain with his arm, as when a man gleans heads of grain in the valley of Rephaim. Yet some gleanings will remain as when an olive tree is beaten, leaving two or three olives on the topmost branches, four or five on their fruitful boughs, declares the Lord, the God of Israel. In that day men will look to their Maker and turn their eyes to the Holy One of Israel. They will not look to the altars, the work of their hands, and they will have no regard for the Asherah poles and the incense altars their fingers have made. In that day, their strong cities, which they left because of the Israelites, will be like places abandoned to thickets and undergrowth, and all will be desolation. You have forgotten God your Savior. You have not remembered the rock, your fortress. Therefore, though you set out the finest plants and plant imported vines, though on the day you set them out you make them grow, and on the morning when you plant them you bring them to bud, Yet the harvest will be as nothing in the day of disease and incurable pain. In the passage that we're looking at today, there are three communities, three cities, three nations that are mentioned in Scripture that are subject to God's judgment. And Isaiah tells them who they are. Isaiah tells us that Damascus, which is Syria, and that Ephraim, which is part of the northern kingdom of Israel, and also the cities of Ayer, are all the subject of God's judgment. The judgment that will come upon them will be swift and it will be strong. The scripture tells us that Damascus, Syria, will no longer be a city. It will be a heap of ruins with no royal power. Judgment is also going to come in this passage as we look upon Ephraim, which is a very significant tribe in the northern kingdom. Ethan's glory will disappear. Not only will it disappear, but the glory of Jacob, which oftentimes is referred to as Israel, because as we know, Jacob was one of the patriarchs and his name was changed to Israel. Jacob's glory will disappear and fade away. And the cities of Ayr will be deserted and left to flocks that no one will chase away. The whole land will look barren. Barren like just after a grain field has been gleaned. gleaned gleaning was done by the poor in the community that would come to pick up some of the scraps and some of the, the leftovers after the grain was picked so that they would have food and ability to eat. And this is what the nations, this is what the cities will look like once destruction and judgment 
crumbs. Because of this judgment, the, the wonderful thing about God that we can always, we can always, always know is that God's judgment always is redemptive. What does that mean? It simply means that God has a redeeming purpose behind his judgment, not just to cause us pain, not just to cause destruction, but God wants to bring us back to himself. There's always a redeeming purpose, and it was a redeeming purpose here as well. The scripture tells us in verses 7 through 9, because of this judgment, Syria and Ephraim, in the people of Ir, will, number one, will look to their creator. Also, they will no longer look to idols for help in worship what the land, what their hands have made. Paul talks about this in Romans as working, worshiping the creature and worshiping the created things rather than the creator who is forever praised. Also, they will never again, judgment is so that they will never again bow down to asterisk poles and false gods and idols. And finally, no longer will they worship at pagan shrines. The cities will be desolate because of this judgment. But in the midst of judgment, there's always hope. In the midst of judgment, there is a redeeming purpose that God has for those that he has created. Verses 10 to 11. We need to really take a look at verses 10 to 11. Why? Because verses 10 to 11 is tell us why this judgment of God has come about. Yes, we're reading the passage now. But God's word is timeless, meaning that it applies even to today. Why has this judgment come about against these cities, these nations? Basically for the same reason that judgment comes about with respect to God's people. Paul says in Romans that all men know the truth of God, but simply have suppressed the truth of God. Paul also says in Romans chapter 1 that all men can see the eternal power and the eternal glory of God and know God so that men are without excuse before God. We know God, but we suppress the truth of God. Why has this judgment come about? Because we have forgotten God, our Savior. We have not remembered the rock who is our fortress. We have forsaken our first love. Have you forsaken your first love who is Christ? We love because he, Christ, he first loved us. The Bible gives us a remedy when we realize that we have forsaken and forgotten God, our Savior, our first love. In Revelation chapter 2, it tells us when Jesus was speaking to the church at Ephesus, he says, I know your deeds, I know your perseverance, I know your hard work, but I have this against you, that you have forsaken your first love. And he tells us, Remember the height from which you have fallen. And then he tells us to repent and repeat the things you did at first. Otherwise, he will remove the lampstand of that church. This can be applied to us. Let us remember. Let us repent. And let us repeat the things that we did when we first met Jesus. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the sovereignty of your word. We thank you for the truth of your word. 
And I pray that your word may be applied to the hearts of those listening. That this is not just an exercise in reading scripture. But it is the first day of a personal encounter with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. This program is produced by the 시청자 여러분의 소중한 후원으로 제작됩니다. 